Hi guys, I wanted to show you this uh, little side project I've been doing for just one day now. Uh, I've made just this uh, game mode and a controller, there's nothing here really. And if we go into the game mode itself, you'll see that anything I'm doing is just uh, console commands that are lowering our um, scalability, screen resolution and removing the max FPS by saying it to 999. And actually you can get even more than a thousand FPS in a build game. Uh, and everything else is being done in the controller itself. So in here I'm just having a tick, one that is doing a Unix time, uh, which is just an integer time of uh, seconds since 1970. Uh, so to, use, to have this function I'm using a... Um, uh, plugin let me show it to you which one was it it was uh, somewhere here so in the project in general I am using low entry plugin extended library HTTP request JSON and socket connection so those three are the most essential to work with what I've done here and I'm also using additional library which is the victory plugin made by Rama I think you know this guy uh, from the forums and uh, well generally he, he's a person to th that most people know so it has a, a lot of custom stuff from him that is helping me here so uh, let's go back to the controllers I'm just doing this uh, tick time because I'll be using this uh, and I just have a HUD and I'm just creating this hat, getting a reference, and then I'm registering a component to the hat, and the component is just uh, of type uh, cryptocurrency exchange component. And in this particular component, I'm just running two things right here. So one goes on tick, and the tick time for this uh, blueprint is two seconds. So every two seconds, I'm updating the book. So I am creating a, an HTTP request because I'm updating the book uh, right now at least uh, through uh, REST API. I'm not using uh, socket connection yet, but I'll be changing that to socket connection. And I'm just going to the uh, URL, which is Bitmax API version one order book L2. And then I'm setting some parameters of what I want to s uh, see, how much of it, and I'm executing this H HTTP request. And after uh, this request is completed, I'm checking if it was successful. And I'm also checking what was the uh, response code, because the only response code that is successful is 200. So if it is 200, I'm saying that we are connected. And then I'm clearing orders and then, uh, then I'm parsing the order book. And to parse it, I'm getting the content as string. So content as string gives me actually a, a JSON object. So then uh, I am getting this JSON string and I'm using one of the plugins I showed you, uh, the JSON plugin from low entry. And I am parsing this JSON string. I know that I have an array inside of it. And for this array, I have uh, objects in the array. And for each object, uh, I'm getting the key of the object and I'm checking if it is uh, something very particular. And I'm setting an order and by reference, I'm setting uh, object in this uh, structure. So I'm just uh, setting all the, um, I'm just setting all the uh, values here. And then I'm adding this one order that I just created uh, to orders as an array. And on return, I will have a new orders array. And I can do anything with this array that I want. So having this array, I know what's the uh, lowest uh, buy and the highest sell on the market at that moment. And I can actually get more than one order, but I'm just getting two of them. Just the one highest and one lowest. I mean, one buy, one sell. And here I have an interface call that's doing a trade and I have different trade options, but for now I'm just doing uh, limit calls. And I'm again creating HTTP requests and I had some problems uh, with HTTP um, header arguments. So I'm actually building a JSON string 
by creating a JSON object, a pure JSON object uh, again from the plugin. So it seems like I'm doing a lot in blueprints, but actually I'm doing a lot uh, in blueprints exposed functions from a plugin. So the actual logic running here is being run in the C++. So once I build this project, I can get um, probably even more than 1000 uh, frames per second. So I can do up to 1000 operations per second. So when it comes down to speed of transa transaction filling, this, this is quite effective. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm uh, creating this JSON object. I'm just setting a lot of stuff like the side of the transaction, the price, quantity, order type, uh, symbol of the currency that I'm going to trade, uh, if it's a buy or sell, um, the URL and other stuff. So it's all being done here. Mm -hmm. And then I'm setting a header. The header is a content type application uh, URL encoded. Then, uh, oh, it's actually, this should be JSON, but doesn't really matter, I guess, because it's still working. So the, then I'm setting the mm, API expires, which is the, mm, the, the time that we are getting in the controller. So the Unix time plus five seconds. So uh, if this doesn't get executed in five seconds on the marketplace, it gets voided. And then I have a key API that I will not show you. And I have also a signature that I can show you how it's being built, but I'm not going to show you my private key, obviously. So here is the signature for the transaction and how it's being done is I'm getting the content as a bit array. And then this bit array is being transformed uh, as UTF-8 uh, string. This string is being put um, here and I'm actually building like uh, according to the documentation, right? So I'm taking the uh, type of the URL. So for this, it is a post and this is uppercase and then we have uh, the full, uh, not the full string, that's the problem. Like you shouldn't have this bitmax.com API, blah, blah, blah. So you just have to have this one. So I'm switching, replacing in this URL, this to this. And I'm also adding the nouns. So the time plus five seconds. Um, and then I'm just uh, combining it all together into one string, putting it uh, again, uh, changing this string back to UTF-8 uh, bitrate uh, array. And I'm just pushing those bytes, getting my API key, changing it to bytes as well. And I'm doing this HMAC, uh, HMAC uh, signature function uh, with algorithm of uh, SHA-256, because this is the one that uh, the exchange is using. And then I'm doing it to hex. And this hex has to be lowercase. This is important. So I'm just doing it to lower. And I can actually put this uh, not only by hex, I can do it by uh, base 16, base 64, uh, web base 64 and other uh, types of encoding. And then this lowercase signature is being pushed as a header API signature. And I'm doing some debug prints, executing the request, getting the response code and getting the content as just as debug. Um, and actually, here, here, because I always want to print to log. I don't always want to print to uh, screen. I'm going to do the same here, honestly. To screen, to screen. So let's say that debug is true. So now I just have uh, one order that I'm executing by uh, pushing a button. I will make a UI for placing orders. And actually what I want to do eventually is that automatical order placing based on certain variables. Uh, so right now when I press Z, I'm pressing a uh, one uh, order for buy for Bitcoin through USD. The time is the Unix time uh, and I'm placing it on BitMEX component. So to this exchange, the field type is limit order. So the limit is not uh, really important, just the price and quantity and it goes into execution. So if I play it, 
I can show you my exchange right now. So I don't have any active positions. I don't have anything, right? My leverage is being set to 25. So let's, and I can see that here I have refresh. I am refreshing the price. I can see the price of buy and sell. I can see that the exchange is being connected and live and I haven't encountered any errors. And this is the unique server time. So let's press Z. And immediately we got a response and we have a full response here. So we have posted this information. So this is what we uh, are si uh, signing. This is the signature and this is the response 200 order ID. We got the order ID. We got our account ID. We got the symbol site. Everything that we pushed is exactly as we wanted. And now if I go into my exchange, you can see active orders. I have one uh, quantity, one order price, five, seven, 100. It didn't feel obviously because I cannot buy this cheap, <laughs> at least not today. Yesterday it was possible. Um, so yeah, it will just be here until canceled, but I can now track it inside the program as well as here. So just cancel it and clear it. So yeah, this is how I manage in one day to have a running exchange um, API. So now what I can do, I can set stop loss, uh, take profit uh, and other uh, calls, and I can make them automatic based on any calculations I'm doing, any predictions or any external API information that I will be just using the same way. So I'm just using few plugins to do HTTP request, build JSON, and uh, yeah, and also socket connection that I'm not using here, but it's uh, quite straightforward. It's very similar to this. Instead of create HTTP, you just do um, uh, you just create socket connection, and then you specify the host port, and you have. Uh, this on receive message and you can do updates based on the message received but you are receiving message in raw bytes so you have to parse those bytes into json and then json has to be parsed like i'm doing it um, like i'm doing it here so i'm just reading the json string and i'm doing a lot of stuff parsing this json uh, knowing what it is so yeah that's it that was just one day of work and I didn't really spend too much time on it and uh, yeah maybe today I will get it uh, to trade automatically thanks for listening see you guys soon bye